This is a 1970s Sony Trinitron color portable television set, vintage television set. And uh, taken a look at this before, but I don't think I've ever plugged it in. And I had the idea here of resurrecting it for the second debate. Um, the CRT, one of the thingies in the back of the CRT that emits electrons that gives you one of the colors. One of the color emitting thingies is no longer emitting. And I think it's beyond rejuvenation because it uh, doesn't emit hardly anything. So, yeah, so it's going to be missing one color, and it's filthy. Solid state Trinitron color. But I thought it might be fun just to get it to work. These are so totally extinct now, you hardly ever see these. Probably once super common, but then the, the picture tubes didn't hold up too well, so they didn't last, even with the original Sony AN14 Japan antenna. Going to have to sweep this thing off. It's been sitting in the uh, chicken coop for a number of years. The model number is a uh, KV1210U. Sony KV-1210U. Here we go. I'm not going to variac this. Like I said, the picture thingy has got a bad color thingy in it. So I'm not... I almost wonder, was this something that came from the factory? This, this TV almost belongs in a museum because they're so rare. So here we go. And that is the power switch. Now I believe these have a little tiny electrolytic capacitor that dries out that initiates the start sequence and if that capacitor is open this is what you get now do I want to get into this or do I want to just go dig some new old stock set out of the out of the stash and get into it so when I plug this in I hear sparking listen So that would indicate that our cord is good, but just nothing. Nothing. So this will just be a resurrection. We're not going to restore this because, like I said, bad. Um, we could just get it to work then that maybe will help you diagnose your vintage Sony Trinitron color television. These look like actually film capacitors which I'm a little bit surprised. I wonder if that's the horizontal output and damper. I'm gonna have to get a schematic on this. I, I wow select I um, I need to blow this thing off this is almost criminal uh, but yeah I think the way it works is and I should keep my mouth shut until I get a schematic but I think the way it works is the whore most of the low voltages for everything come off the flyback so you got to get the horizontal output to start, and then it's like a big loop. But, uh, ooh, look at the old pincushion transformer. 
That's kind of cool. These early solid state sets were. Look at the big color burst crystal back there. Like a like right there, what a tube set would have in it—a big, the big old can color burst crystal. And this is looks like it's got high voltage going into the neck, and high voltage going into the CRT. I'm sure all these electrolytics are. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna blow this off a little bit and uh, get a schematic for it. Just listen to the airplane as uh, we look at this schematic because, well, I was a little bit wrong. This is not the. This does not appear to be the model that uses the start capacitor. And this is one of those circuits you have to look at for a while before you understand what makes the airplane fly. So I'm assuming the spark is coming from that point one. So it looks like it has instant on. That's what that 1200 ohm is about. At least I think. It's a 27K. Wow, what a trippy. What a trippy schematic. Okay, so I notice I pushed a circuit breaker and it seems like it pops it right away. What's weird is the circuit breaker I thought was on the other side of the filament. So I wonder if this is a shorted horizontal output transistor or shorted. I notice these capacitors are actually cracking. See that? get a light bulb across that. Okay, so if I reset the circuit breaker with the power switch off, we're getting uh, 2.8 watts. And I guess maybe that would make sense. So this is a really confusing circuit. So when the set is off, the power is coming through the bridge rectifier back to the transformer right or no maybe it's coming around here okay so when the set is off the power is coming from here up over through this resistor to the transformer back to the return so now I'm gonna assume when I pull a power switch it's just gonna snap the circuit breaker so here goes Yep, it's instant. What I'm thinking of doing here, because diagnosing this could be fairly complex, whether the regulator shorted, the horizontal output shorted, something else is shorted. What I've considered doing is, or what I'm going to do is, I put clip leads across the breaker and I'm starting with a 68 watt bulb and if, if it's a shorted capacitor or something that needs to reform it'll generally start out bright and then kind of get dimmer as it reforms. Uh, if it's a hard short like a rectifier or something like that it's just going to be a hard short. 
So uh, what I considered doing was the light bulb and then using the infrared to look at the thing and see what's getting hot. So here we go. I'm going to power it up. That looks like a pretty hard short. But yeah, that looks like a very hard short. We'll start here, low voltage rectifier. That's these weird looking diodes right here. Okay, there's two diodes here and this is the power coming in here and here. This is the output here and here. And each package contains two diodes. It's a weird setup. I have not seen this configuration before, but a uh, diode like this should measure half a volt one direction and open the other direction. When you're using diode scale, it applies like two volts and then measures the drop. So that one is shorted and this one is shorted, but this one measures okay. This is, be nice to have a cameraman right now. You can see this one here measures half a volt. And if I if I come over to this one. Come on. It measures half a volt also. So the top one appears to be shorted. That would be a real lucky situation if it was just a low voltage rectifier was shorted. It is shorted. I'm going to replace it with, uh, what are these, 1 in 4007 just to try it. Okay, so I got them pointing away from each other. That's what the symbolism there shows. They actually got them color coded, huh? Interesting. So, like I said, resurrection. And that gives a good visual. Actually, let's let's see here. So does the schematic. The SAMS gives a visual on that too. See, two of them point towards each other, and the other two point away from each other. So, okay, back to our 50 watt light bulb. Here we go. Ooh. I hear crackle, crackleage. And I hear the oscillator starting. Hear that? Let's, uh, should we go through the bigger bulb? I think the circuit breaker is 1.25. I think this is 150 watts. Here we go. Happiness. You know, I should probably do with this thing. Before anything else, I should probably pull the chassis out and spray all the pots. So we had a hard short and we were lucky that the short was in these diodes right here. The short really could have been in the power supply here or more likely in the uh, horizontal output. This guy right here. And at that point I would have just inserted the thing right into the trash. Because like I said, this is weak. So I'd like to pull it apart. And yeah, shorts are kind of hard to diagnose. You just have to start with the simple stuff like here. And then maybe that capacitor would be shorted. Although it's unlikely that capacitor would be shorted as hard as these rectifiers were. Um, 
and then of course you've got a fuse right here so you just have to on shorts you have to just start eliminating stuff until you get rid of the short and then you know just start disconnecting things until you get rid of it but this was an easy one we got lucky that it was right here in the front end and the light bulb will really help with cutting down on blowing fuses and circuit breakers and stuff and it gives you a visual reference as to when you actually get rid of the short but yeah we got a dirty uh, power switch dirty controls and as far as serviceability goes this comes right off which is nice you got your pots here so we'll spray a little little control cleaner in these maybe the tuner open this up and give this a little squirt spray this is the electrolytic we could spray that with control cleaner I sprayed this I sprayed all the controls, worked them back and forth. Let's just take a second to look at the build quality of this thing. So I wonder what this is. Is this our audio amp? Looks like our audio output transformer right there. Pin cushion transformer. I don't know what that one is. Oh, this does use one tube, but uses a high voltage rectifier tube. Um, it's probably our horizontal output with those thousand volt snubber capacitors on it. Um, look at the amount of metal in this. This is the IF strip. Look at all the coax leads connected to this. Of course, yeah, there's our filter capacitor. This looks like the uh, video and color processing. Green, red, and blue. Beautifully built. Just the amount of metal, full metal chassis. Vertical linearity, vertical bias, vertical height, something frequency. A little trimmer capacitor tacked onto the back. It's like the kind of thing I would do to repair a bad IF can. So the date is 1970. This thing has no integrated circuits in it. This is all discrete. Every bit of this thing is discrete components. Transistors, diodes. Ooh, that's cool. That pattern there matches this pattern here. Brightness, contrast, yeah. Or if channel six will come in. No video. There it is. Channel 6 analog. Ooh, the guy's got a guitar. See it there? He's hardcore. He's a rocker. This picture tube is spent. I mean, it is it is out of funds. 
Okay, so this has my, uh, can't get over my hardcore, hard rocker, guitar flavored uh, Channel 6 country, religious country, Mexican music, anyway. Really? It should not be copyright if it's live music. The copyright should not be. Okay, enough of that. So we got a screen here. We got screen and then we got background controls. So there should be in. There we go. Guadalupe. I mean, resurrected, it's been woken up from the dead, but it's hardly marginally functional. Now we got our house track going on. Muchísimas gracias, Padre Roberto. Gracias por estar ahí acompañándonos. Gracias a John Carlos que nos ha hecho. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Esta la musica. Absolutely. All right, grande musica. Here we go. Grayscale adjustment. Connect a crosshatch. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, all right. Can't can't concentrate. Um, turn contrast brightness. The red background fully counterclockwise. Turn the screen control fully clockwise. This gives a dark screen. Turn the green background control to center range. Adjust for visible crosshatch pattern. Adjust the red blue background. Controls as needed for pure white. We are not going to get pure white. Oh, better not use that word. Okay, uh, there's no hope here. Uh, all the backgrounds are all the way up. The screen is all the way up. And that's how this CRT tests. The CRT tests like this picture looks. It's dead. So, they're talking about Roku and that Guadalupe TV radio is on Roku. Uh, I know... See, you can listen to this on in the car on 80... 88.7... 87.7, right? 87.7 is channel 6. So I think what they're trying to do is eventually they're going to have to shut down their analog uh, over the air TV. So they're trying to get people to go to Roku. Descargar las actualizaciones disponibles desde el servidor de Roku. Sí, so, yeah, they want they want people to go to Roku. So I wonder when they're going to lose when we're going to lose over the air low power channel six. I mean, it's it's kind of neat for stuff like this. You know, it's it's better than having a generator in a way. Ingresa a Roku.com diagonal link. Okay, this is a 330 AD22. Is that 330 millimeters diagonally? 33 centimeters? Uh, 3.3 decimeters. Yeah, I guess that would be about right. Um, 6.3 D7. Do I have seven? Yes, I have seven. Living in a country where we use a hybrid of uh, uh, measurement types, standards, both the imperial system and the metric system. It's kind of a interesting thing. Okay, so there's the red gun. That's we're on emissions here. There's the green gun. And there's the blue gun. So that you know that explains the picture you see, right? So should we hit this with the rejuvenizer? Should we see what happens if we pop it? 
Which one should we pop first? Green is the deader one. Okay, let's do Rejuve one. I think that... Let's pop it a few times. No better. Let's go to Rejuve two. Now that's getting her cooking. It's getting nice and bright in there. Okay, here we go. Pop, pop goes the CRT. Pop it again for good luck. Let's give it a little bit more filament voltage. Let's just finish it off. we go. Pop. No, it ain't having it. Sorry, it's not going to happen. I wonder what auto restore would do to this. Okay, it pulsed three times. And the reason why it drops like that is because it turns the filament voltage down when you come back over. So yeah, that didn't do anything to it. We could try that on, let's see, what other gun is... Oh, 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 used a bad word there. Okay, that's blue. Okay, that's this is red. Let's see what happens if we hit uh, the restore function on uh, red. So three cycles, I think. One. This just boils the hell out of the cathode. Okay. Nah. No hope. I could try it again on green. There is no hope for this picture bulb. None whatsoever. Maybe a brightener. I took a couple diodes off of this board because this TV is pretty much trash with the dead uh, picture tube. A couple MR812s and I put them on there so I could uh, save my 4007s with the long leads. So we'll do debates on this. It's it's almost be worth getting trying to find a CRT for, but setting these Trinitrons up, the convergence and stuff, can be a little bit challenging. And um, I don't know if this is the one with the little magnets that you have to stick on it. I think it is. I I'm not that familiar with these. So anyway, uh, let's see how horrible this debate is. and. Uh, it's a little Trinitron diagnostic action. Businesses in schools and hotspots, a federal mandate to wear masks. You have two minutes to respond without interruption. Thank you, Susan. Well, the American people have witnessed what is the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of our country. And here are the facts. 210,000 dead people in our country in just the last several months. 
over 7 million people who have contracted this disease. One in five businesses closed. We're looking at frontline workers who have been treated like sacrificial workers. We are looking at over 30 million people who in the last several months had to file for unemployment. And here's the thing. On January 28th, the vice president and the president were informed about the nature of this pandemic. They were informed that it's lethal in consequence, that it is airborne, that it will affect young people, and that it would be contracted because it is airborne. And they knew what was happening and they didn't tell you. Can you imagine if you knew on January 28th, as opposed to March 13th, what they knew, what you might have done to prepare? They knew and they covered it up. The president said it was a hoax. They minimized the seriousness of it. The president said, you're on one side of his ledger. If you wear a mask, you're on the other side of his ledger if you don't. And in spite of all of that, today they still don't have a plan. They still don't have a plan. Well, Joe Biden does. And our plan is about what we need to do around a national strategy for contact tracing, for testing, for administration of the vaccine, and making sure that it will be free for all. That is the plan that Joe Biden has and that I have, knowing that we have to get a hold of what has been going on, and we need to save our country. And Joe Biden is the best leader to do that. And frankly, this administration Thank has forfeited Thank you, their right Harris. to re-election based Th on this. Thank you, Senator Harris. Vice President Pence, more than 210,000 Americans have died of COVID-19 since February. The U.S. death toll as a percentage of our population is higher than that of almost every other wealthy nation on Earth. For instance, our death rate is two and a half times that of Canada next door. You head the administration's coronavirus task force. Why is the U.S. death toll as a percentage of our population higher than that of almost every other wealthy country? And you have two minutes to respond without interruption. Susan, thank you. And I want to thank the commission and the University of Utah for hosting this event. And uh, Senator Harris, it's a privilege to be on the stage with you. And our nation has gone through a very challenging time this year. But I want the American people to know that from the very first day, President Donald Trump has put the health of America first. Before there were more than five cases in the United States, all people who had returned from China, President Donald Trump did what no other American president had ever done. And that was he suspended all travel from China, the second largest economy in the world. Now, Senator Joe Biden opposed that decision. He said it was xenophobic and hysterical. But I can tell you, having led the White House Coronavirus Task Force, that that decision alone by President Trump bought us invaluable time to stand up the greatest national mobilization since World War II. And I believe it saved hundreds of thousands of American lives. Because with that time, we were able to reinvent. But when Joe Biden was vice president, they hesitated for a month. And when armed forces finally went in, it was clear she'd been moved two days earlier. And her family says with... This is what an American. extremely weak the CRT looks like. They believe Kayla would be alive today. Thank you, Vice Look, President. We destroyed the ISIS caliphate. Uh, and you talk about re-entering the Iran nuclear deal. I mean, the last administration transferred $1.8 billion to the leading state sponsor Thank you, Vice of President. terrorism. President Donald Trump got us out of the deal. Thank you, Vice President Pence. And, and when Qasem Soleimani was traveling to Baghdad Thank you, Vice to President harm Pence. to Americans... President Donald Trump took Thank you, Vice out, President Pence. and America is, is safer, our allies are safer, and the American people know <laughs> President Donald Trump will never have Thank to you, Vice President take Pence. action. I would like to give uh, Senator Harris a, a chance to respond, but not at such great length, because of course there are other topics we want to talk about. But I would like equal time. Yes. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, first of all, to the Mueller family, I, I, I know about your daughter's case, and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, what happened to her is awful, and it should have never happened. And I know Joe feels the same way, and I know that President Obama feels the same way. Um, but you mentioned Soleimani. Let's let's start there. 
So, after the strike on Soleimani, there was a counter strike on our troops in Iraq. And they suffered serious brain injuries. And do you know what Donald Trump dismissed them as? Headaches. And this is about a pattern of Donald Trump's, where he has referred to our men who are serving in our military as suckers and losers. Donald Trump, who went to Arlington Cemetery and stood above the graves of our fallen heroes and said, what's in it for them? Because, of course, you know, he only thinks about what's in it for him. Let's take what he said about John McCain, a great American hero. And, and, and Donald Trump says he doesn't deserve to be called a hero because he was a prisoner of war. Take, and this is, this is very important, when you want to talk about who is the current commander-in-chief and what they care about and what they don't care about. Public reporting that Russia had bounties on the heads of American soldiers. And you know what a bounty is? It's somebody puts a price on your head and they will pay it if you are killed. And Donald Trump had talked at least six times to Vladimir Putin and never brought up the subject. Joe Biden would never do that. Thank Joe you. Joe Biden would, but, but Joe Biden. Yeah would hold Russia to account for any threat to our nation's security or to our troops who are sacrificing their lives for the sake of our democracy and our safety. Thank you, Senator Harris. This is such an important issue, but we have other important issues as well. And Susan, I want to I make sure we have a chance to talk about I really to have to respond about. to that. I, I, Look, uh, she has... 15 she, seconds, because well, I gotta we're have trying to keep... That. Look, well, you, I'm sorry, but Vice President, Look, but you've I, had more time than she's had. The, the, the so far, slanders against President Donald Trump regarding men and women of our armed forces are absurd. I'm, I'm sorry, Vice My President My son is Pence. a captain in the United yes. States Marine Corps. My son-in-law is deployed in the United States Navy. I can assure all of you, with sons and daughters serving in our military, President Donald Trump not only respects but reveres all of those who serve in our armed forces. And any suggestion otherwise is ridiculous. But Let thank you, Vice President Pence. Vice the American Pence, people deserve, you know, the Susan, the American President, people deserve I didn't, to know. Uh, Vice President they, Pence, I did not, the, excuse the, 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 Susan, the I American did not create the know. rules for tonight. Joe Biden. You, you, your campaigns come. agreed to the rules for tonight's I, debate with I, the Commission on Presidential Debates. I'm here to enforce them, which involves moving from one topic to another, giving roughly equal time to both of you, right which ahead. is what I'm trying very hard to go do. Go right ahead. So I want to go ahead and move to the next topic, which is an important one as the last topic was, and that is the Supreme Court. On Monday, the Senate Judiciary Committee is scheduled to open hearings on Amy Coney Barrett's nomination to the Supreme Court. Senator Harris, you'll be there as a member of the committee. Her confirmation would cement the court's conservative majority and make it likely open to more abortion restrictions, even to over... Anyway, Access to where do we get the cool colors? Oh, there we go. Pence. That's what a um, if no Wade is over dead CRT looks like on a color TV. This television is spent. Every bit of life pretty much has run out of it. Well, thank you for the question. I'll just hold it in my time to respond. It belongs uh, it belongs in the dump or as a parts set. So that's a repair of a 1970 Sony Trinitron, cute little TV, but just no more life.